Hello guys and welcome back to yet another AMC video. Today, I'd like to discuss how Citadel has concealed their true short position. You may recall that the number of unpurchased Citadel securities appeared to have decreased. However, Biotech Moose's exhaustive research proves that this is not the case and that Citadel was the culprit. In fact, liabilities have been growing in size. Therefore, remain tuned and let's earn some cash. And now I'll present the essential information. As a result, I'm going to begin by reading through the due diligence and describing precisely what's transpired. However, this could be a bit confusing. So I'll make sure to explain it in the simplest terms possible after we've gone through the numbers. Consequently, over the past four or five years, the number of Citadel securities sold but not yet acquired has increased significantly. In 2018, there were 22 billion, which increased to 25 trillion in 2020. This soared to $57 billion. In 2021, the number jumped to 65 billion. As of 2022, this quantity appeared to have decreased from 65 billion to approximately 45 billion. As previously stated, Biotech Moose has demonstrated that the population has increased to 83 billion, which is considerably higher than in 2021. As a brief reminder, the securities that have been sold but not yet purchased are essentially synthetic shares. Currently, these synthetics are produced in two distinct methods. First, there is the synthetic created when a hedge fund or short seller desires to short sell AMC shares, but Citadel can't locate any. Therefore, they simply construct a fictitious share for the hedge fund to use as market support. This is somehow permitted and exempt under their bona fide market maker exemption, which is utter nonsense. However, there are also synthetic shares created on the opposite side of the transaction. When common apes like you and I want to purchase AMC shares, there are evidently none left for sale, as apes hold all of their shares. However, if you or I place a buy order, they use their infinite liquidity mechanism to fulfill our orders by creating additional synthetic shares for us to purchase. Now Citadel was attempting to assert that the number of synthetic shares had decreased substantially since 2021, from $65 billion worth to $45 billion. Nonetheless, this investigation reveals that they have been concealing synthetics worth between $35 and $40 billion. In reality, the number is 83.28 billion. Now, according to this paragraph, reverse repo agreements and repo agreements are primarily collateralized by receiving or pledging securities. Typically, the company has rehypothecation rights over the securities received as collateral under reverse repo agreements. In addition, the counterparty typically has rehypothecation rights with respect to the securities collateral received from the company under regular repo agreements. And as of December 31, 2022, the vast majority of securities collateral received under repo agreements and reverse repo agreements had been rehypothecated. This essentially indicates that they have separated their synthetic shares into three distinct categories. Consequently, there are securities that have been sold but not yet purchased, as well as securities that have been pledged and repledged, e. given to someone else, but not yet purchased. In the repo and reverse repo facility, Citadel receives pledged assets before repledging or transferring them to another party. In addition, they pledge securities again by giving those securities to another party. If one of these hedge funds returns synthetic shares to Citadel as part of a repo reverse repo transaction, Citadel is able to re-lend, re-hypothecate, or re-pledge the synthetic shares to another party. In addition, this last line reveals that the majority of securities collateral received under repo and reverse repo agreements had been repledged. In addition, as of December 31, 2022, the fair value of securities received as collateral under these reverse repo agreements was $17.7 billion. In addition, the fair value of securities pledged as collateral for regular repo agreements was $19.7 billion. Therefore, Citadel receives synthetic shares as collateral and relends the same synthetic shares to be shorted over and over again. Taking into account the $45 billion in securities sold but not yet purchased, along with the $17.7 .7 billion and $19.9 .9 billion in synthetic shares that have effectively been reloaned, the total amount is $83 billion. Unpercased liabilities, 
also known as securities that have been sold, repledged, or pledged without ever being purchased, continue to rise for Citadel. JP Morgan is yet another company with an excessively high liability position. Alastair tweeted that JP Morgan's enormous short position in gold derivatives may exceed the bank's assets. Today, one of the best is cited. Money managers around the world warned that JP Morgan's short position in gold derivatives may exceed the bank's total assets. Then, he contemplated the repercussions for JP Morgan if the price of gold increases by $1,000. What keeps Dr. Stephen Lieb up at night is the question of how much exposure a bank like J.P. Morgan has to the gold derivatives market. We are aware that J.P. Morgan is repeatedly detected and fined for manipulating the precious metals market, and as a result, it is manifestly overexposed. According to him, J.P. Morgan's gold short position exceeds the bank's total assets. Consequently, if the price of gold increases by $1,000, and J.P. Morgan sustains a 50% or 100% loss, the bank could fail. Now, speaking of these complex derivatives and short positions, Elon Musk discussed complex derivatives a year ago. This sort of complements my video from yesterday. Elon Musk has previously stated that sophisticated hedge funds have frequently taken advantage of small investors by utilizing short selling and complex derivatives. He stated that they will conduct a negative publicity campaign to temporarily drive the stock price down, catch out, and then repeat the process numerous times. As you may be aware, he stated that the term for this is brief and distorted. Clearly, Elon Musk has expressed his disapproval of short sellers numerous times. And it's wonderful to have Elon Musk on our side. But I also wanted to mention this brief and misleading campaign. As we all know it occurs daily on AMC. So K tweets that they just completed their quarterly review of my old posts to determine the appearance of AMC spam automated accounts. Now they claim that many of these accounts have been suspended, purged, or repurposed as accounts for political propaganda. However, according to Bigham's tweet, it is more probable that Robinhood will fail because it is essentially a Ponzi scheme. And if the SEC were to alter their regulations, this would expose the issue. As a company, Robinhood plainly does not profit from its stock trading platform. Clearly, evidently, they are incurring enormous, enormous losses due to all of their new developments and employees. Robinhood's only source of revenue is payment for order flow, which essentially entails selling client data directly to Citadel. If Robinhood is allied with Citadel and they both oppose these new SEC regulations, I believe these regulations are a brilliant idea and would likely result in Robinhood's demise and Citadel's continued struggle. And Citadel would continue to struggle because they would no longer have an advantage over retail investors due to access to all of their investment data. If Citadel can no longer acquire customers before Robinhood, Citadel loses its competitive advantage and ceases to earn more money. However, please let me know what you think in the comments section below. As always, gentlemen, be sure to ring the notification chime so that you are notified whenever I upload a new video.